Oh, it sound right, DJ. It sure does. My name is Wayne Bolden. I'm here at the Speed King Channel. It is Tuesday, and guess what? The verdict's in, and so is Medina Spirit. They have ruled that Bob Baffert, Medina Spirit, concert tour, will be able to run and participate in this year's 146 running of the Preakness Stakes. So we can discuss that, chew over the fat, wonder where you stand on it. And he also has two other horses that are running. Um, on Friday, he has that beautiful gift running in the Black Eye Susan. And then on Saturday, in the St. Barton Stakes, he has Hoser running. So we'll dive into that and we'll dive into the post position of the runners and the Preakness. As always, please, if you're watching this video, do us a big, big favor. Ring the bell so you can be notified each and every time that we do one of these videos so you will know what's going on in the racing world as well as any other picks that we have or analysis. And also, please, subscribe to our channel. We do appreciate your support as always. Well, folks, uh, I do appreciate our commentary that we've had in the last two or three days. Uh, obviously, the video that we put out there, uh, should Medina Spirit be allowed to participate in this year's Preakness. And the response we got has been overwhelming, as you can see, almost 3,000 views. And you guys just, and gals, continue to amaze me with the comments and the commentary. And the thing that amazes me the most is that it's classy. So again, I thank you for that. And uh, all that aren't classy, we get rid of them people immediately. So we want to be respectful of everybody's opinion and the right to have one. And that's why I love you folks is because we do this thing classy. You know, we're horse fans and we love our, our sport and we love our game. And here we are. I mean, I'm not sure how I feel about this. But apparently the attorneys got involved. Uh, they're going to do some additional testing on all four Bob Baffert's horses this weekend. That would be Beautiful Gift, uh, Hauser, and of course Medina Spirit and Concert Tour. But let's dial right in on the Preakness uh, draw this afternoon. Well, uh, a field of 10 goes to the post for the 146 Preakness on Saturday uh, with a cloud over it. You know, uh, only in America with the cloud over. The number one horse is Ram. That is that horse that we talked about in our previous video for the Preakness. That is the D. Wayne Lucas allowance horse that took, I don't know, six or seven times to break its maiden. So the number one horse, Ram, is installed uh, at 30 to 1. Not sure why he's in the race, so we could probably throw him out right away. The number two horse is Keep Me In Mind. Well, you know, we all watched the Derby, and he was dead last, and he picked up tired horses around, uh, you know, the turn and came home fairly fa uh, fast. So the number two horse uh, is 15 to 1, keep me in mind. I can understand the uh, connections being high on him uh, because of what they thought they saw in the, uh, in the Derby, and I've seen the same thing. Uh, but typically these races don't shape out like that. It's usually two or three races after that. Uh, and we got to remember, uh, Pimlico is very, very speedy. So keep me in mind. We'll do a full analysis once we get our final data and speed figures uh, like that. The number three horse that drew in was uh, our favorite and uh, controversial horse, uh, Medina Spirit. Uh, once again, uh, the connections of this horse has changed their tune on how this could possibly happen. Um, you know, so it was a, uh, a mistake, I guess. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. But Medina Spirit is the three horse. Um, draws in. He is installed as the favorite at 9 to 5. And uh, I guess he should be. He is the derby winner. Um, speaking of Medina Spirit, I mean, I really don't know what side to come down on. You know, I can hear argument from both sides. Um, you are innocent in America until proven guilty. 
So they do need to wait for the second sample or the split sample to come back. Um, the risk that Pimico run and the Preakness run is if that sample comes back positive and he is disqualified from the win position in the Derby, and God forbid if he wins the, the, the Preakness, you know, it's really going to damper the sport even more. So please comment on that, you know. Um, if he wins the race and get disqualified from the Derby, how does that affect how we view the Preakness? And I can understand uh, the authorities with the Preakness. Um, nothing has been proven and he hasn't been disqualified yet. So if they didn't allow him to run, obviously they'll be setting themselves up for a lawsuit. So to be honest and fair, uh, the Pimico Authority, the Maryland Jockey Club, is put in an impossible position. They'd be damned if they do, they'd be damned if they don't. So it is a really hard position they were put in. I guess the right thing to do is he hasn't been, uh, you know, fixed with anything. Let's put it that way. Uh, Medina Spirit has been accused of something. They do have a sample. They need to get all the evidence in. And until then, he's innocent. So I guess the fair thing to do was to allow him to run. But you let me know your opinion, which I know that you would. But I know the Maryland Jockey Club is in an impossible position. Uh, again, if they don't let him run, they're going to get sued. There's no doubt about it. Um, because, again, you were saying you're making a, a statement that the whole, it's guilty and whatever. The risk they run is that if it does come back positive, and I believe that a split sample always come back positive or 90% of the time from my work uh, for something totally different in the laboratory. And we would be testing for hydrocarbons and VOCs and stuff like that. So, again, an impossible situation. But at the end of the day, the Dean of Spirit is running, and um, I guess that's the right thing that the Merlin Jockey Club, uh, Jockey uh, Club had to do. So, you know, he's installed at nine to five, coming from your three post, uh, of course, with Johnny Villa. Uh, the number four horse, uh, Crowded Trade. Of course, you know this is Chad Brown's horse. It was third in the Wood Memorial, as we discussed, behind Bombardic. Uh, the track was real deep that day. Uh, the horse is training forwardly. Uh, of course, we will need to see the numbers before we make a final assessment. But he is a new shooter on the scene. And, um, you know, he's fresh. Hasn't run since um, April 3rd. He is the freshest horse in the race uh, with uh, five, almost six weeks of, uh, of rest. So he's been installed as the number four horse in the field of 10. The number five horse is uh, the horse that I liked in the Derby, Midnight Bourbon, who missed the break, uh, thanks to Mike Smith. We, we don't, we're not mad at Mike for that, but you know, it happens in a 20 horse field. Um, pretty sad, I guess his odds is not 25 to one as it was in the Derby, of course. It is five to one. And I think it'll be a much different story this time with uh, Midnight Bourbon. I think he'll be close, and I do think Bob Baffert's horse is vulnerable, both Medina Spirit and Concert Tour. But I'll wait and see what the uh, final speed figures are. Uh, should be able to get them tomorrow, no later than Thursday. But I'm all probably really committed to Midnight Bourbon in the race. I mean, honestly, I don't really want to play the race, to be honest with you. Uh, and I'll let you know when we do our final uh, horse analysis or our top two or top three picks. So uh, he is the number five, Steve Asmussen, Midnight Bourbon. The horse that I thought was really, really interesting in our pre uh, Preakness uh, video that we did uh, a week or so ago was Rambauer. I thought Rambauer was the only horse that came out of a major stake race, which is the uh, bluegrass, uh, he ran third behind, of course, Essential Quality. And again, the fact that it's Mike McCarthy and he, uh, you know, that's his circuit down there. Uh, the Maryland circuit, uh, the Delaware circuit. Uh, Mike was some kind of rider down there as well. So 
Again, Rambauer is a very interesting horse. He did draw the number six position. He's 12 to 1. That's a square price for, for, uh, for this horse in that race. And I would be interested to see what his, his uh, speed figures are when I pull them on uh, Thursday or Wednesday night. Um, but he is the six horse. And the weird horse, uh, Fransco de India. De India. Uh, one of our viewers texted me and let me know that Joel Rosario did ride his horse in the UAE Derby. I didn't know that. Uh, he must have had a horrible trip. And um, apparently they're really, really high on this. I think the reason that we even look at this horse, uh, the number seven horse, France, go D India uh, is because Joel Rosario is on him. And we all know how good Joel Rosario is uh, in finishing. So, I mean, you know, uh, we'll have to see if I can get some speed figures on the number seven, the France horse. The number eight horse uh, is a Todd Pletcher's horse, the Unbridled Honor. Unbridled Honor ran second in the Lexington uh, behind King Fury. That was the day the track was real muddy. Uh, I need to, again, see what his speed figures are. He draws the 8-hole. He is 15-1. to one. The number 9 is another Chad Brown horse, Risk Taking. Risk Taking is installed at 15-1 to one from the 9 poles. Um, risk Taking wasn't in, in uh, prior to us doing our pre Preakness uh, video a week ago. He was actually entered into Peter Pan, and Chad Brown decided to uh, scratch him out of the Peter Pan up there in Belmont and run him here. And I think you should say, uh-oh, you know, because Chad Brown does know what he's doing. He's very, very sharp. And he's installed at 15-1 to 1 from the 9-hole. And the last horse entered into this race is Concertor. Concertor is the number 10 horse, and of course you know he's from, that's right, Bob Baffert's barn. Uh, these horses are being tested and retested, apparently, uh, for banned substance. Uh, that was part of the agreement with the attorneys. Uh, he is the 10 horse, and he is installed at 5-2. to two. So, what do we know? Well, in the field of 10, the favorite and co-favorite are trained by the trainer that's under scrutiny and controversy, Bob Baffert. Medina Spirit is installed at 9-5. to five. And concert tour is installed at five to two. So, again, here we are. Uh, not sure what's going to happen here. I'm not that enthused about the race, to be honest with you. Uh, I do have uh, Bodenheimer running uh, Saturday night down in um, Prairie Meadows. Uh, I will put that video out. It is waiting to be premiered uh, tomorrow, I believe. Um, but I mean, it's, it's just sour grapes here, right? I mean, I, you know, I don't know what to say, to be honest with you. You know, I'm not enthusiastic like I usually am and I'm kind of sad about the situation, to be honest, because I love the game so much. I pour so much into it as well as you folks do. And I could tell that by your comments from our video, should Medina Spirit be, uh, allowed to run. So... At the end of the day, I believe that uh, this will be the, the most watched Preakness in history uh, up to this point. I really do believe that because there is uh, very seldom on your local news station do you see anything to do with horse racing. And I've seen a number of times of uh, what they call the scandal or the banned drug with Bob Baffert, who's obviously a, a good trainer, I guess, in his own right, and everybody knows the white hair guy. You know, he's you know he's pretty much the face of racing. So, um, you know, the media jumped on that right away, and and it's all over the local news. So, I think the public's going to dial in. I think this is going to be the most watched Preakness ever. Um, but for race fans like you and I, we just need to continue to have commentary. What would I like to see happen? Y'all know my position. I believe racing, the health of racing, will not be uh, significant until we have a governing body. Um, that what happens in California and in Kentucky and in New York and any other circuit 
is that it's governed by the same set of rules and circumstances across the board uh, for everybody. And again, that's pretty simplistic. I mean, of course, I'm not in the industry where, you know, there's a lot more to it. But I think that's where we start. A few of the viewers, as you know, have made some tremendous, tremendous points uh, coming from different walks of life, different professional. Uh, I'm, a police officer was out there that had done investigations. Uh, folks like me who've worked in the laboratories. Just people from all professions of life watching our videos have chimed in. And one of the viewers I do is struck me. Uh, said that, hey, why don't they have these problems overseas? And, and you know, I never thought of that. And uh, I've never hear of drug problems or anything else like that going on overseas at any time. So we may take a page from their book and see how they do it, but it is clear that we do need to do something here in the uh, States if our game is to survive. So, there you go. There is the 10 entries for the Preakness, uh, 1 through 10, of course. Um, and our favorite, of course, is Medina Spirit, and the buzz will continue around him. And really, what everybody's waiting for is the split sample. You know, nobody's, you know we're going to watch the Preakness, or maybe we won't, I don't know, but everybody's waiting for the split sample. That's what everybody's waiting for. And I would be shocked if that split sample isn't the same as the original sample. Because that's where the split sample came from. I mean, I ran too many analyticals not to know that, you know. So, again, there's your 10. On Thursday, we'll do an analysis of all 10. We'll go through the speed figures. We'll go through the equibase. We'll go through the buyers. We'll go through the past performances. We'll interact with you to see what you like. And then we'll come up if we decide to play the race. Right now, I'm leaning that I'm not going to really play the race. You know, and I do like Midnight Bourbon. I mean, if I liked him in the Derby, I'm going to surely have to like him here, right? Uh, after having a bad start. So, once again, uh, I just wanted to go over the pre-entries. Uh, with you. We'll do an analysis of the race, but I'm not that psyched about it. I am psyched about Bodenheimer on Saturday down there in the um, stake race. It does sound right, DJ. So once again, folks, again, thanks for all your comments uh, on the previous video. I mean, we've done tremendous there, and all you folks who have donated to the channel, again, we appreciate you. Stay classy in all you do. As always, comment on this video, the entries, the draws, what's your position? Are you going to bet this race? Are you going to just watch this race, or are you going to not watch it? I know quite a few viewers said they're just not going to watch it. And that's what we don't want is to lose fans. But I understand their position, and I'm not sure if I'm going to wager into the race. You know, I'm kind of dejected with it. So once again, let's start it over again. Let's get our comments going. Let's keep it classy. Let's keep it 100, right? And um, let's go from there. Thursday, we'll do a full analysis of the Preakness and maybe the Black Eyed Susan and some of the other stake races. Once again, Wayne Bolden from the Speed King channel, folks. If you're interested, please email us at speedking24 at yahoo.com and buy one of these shirts. It does sound right, DJ Boogie. Stay classy in all you do, folks. My name is Wayne Bolden. I'm gone. Have a great day.